Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come together. Your Sabbath day, Heavenly Father. Today you said to have a holy convocation so we can learn more about your word, Heavenly Father. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us understanding, Lord God, not just to understand your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 The title of today's lesson is, God's plan was to create more gods. God's plan was to create more gods. Like I said, so when he, when he created man in the beginning, when we were supposed to be in the garden, we were supposed to be in his image and his likeness. But when sin came, that's when we fell. We fell um, from, being, from being in the state where God wants to be in because sin entered the world. That's why we die now. However, he sent his son Jesus so that we can get back right into that right standing with the Father if we accept him, cover up under his blood, and believe in him. And then when we die, we put on our spiritual bodies. Then we'll be, that's why the Bible says we'll be heirs to God and joint heirs to Christ. And like I said, so um, we'll still be spirit beings and we'll be just like how God is exactly at that time. So we're going to go through the scriptures and we're going to read through the scriptures how he created us to be just like him. We're going to start this uh, lesson off in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read 26 and 28. Genesis 1, we're going to read 26 and 28. Did you get it? That's not 6 through 28? No, 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 no it's 26. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. No, that's, that's a 2 through 28. That's all right. Yeah, but well, the no, 2 was off to the side. Yes, yeah, it's a little small. Oh. That's all good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a Jason. Oh, okay, that's yes. Yeah. Genesis 1, 26 and 28. When you get there, go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image after likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. See, the, see, we're supposed to have, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created mm -hmm. he him. Male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You see how he said we're supposed to have dominion over these things, and that's what uh, God created us to do. We have, we have dominion, that means you're over these things. So now it's going to go to Psalms 8. Psalm so 8. Adam and Eve was actually gods at the beginning. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Until the fall, until sin mm -hmm. came. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when he said he created us in his image, he looks like us? Yeah. yeah. His image and his likeness, right? That's why when, when, when they saw Christ, he looked, he showed them his hands. He said, look at my, look at the palm of my hands. Like, this is me. He ate with them. He disappeared. You know, he walked through the wall, though. He's on his, he's on his spiritual body. So with your spiritual body, you can walk through walls and things like that, right? But it was still a body; they still recognize Christ. Features yeah, they still, yeah. Like I said, you just, you just, we'll, we'll just be bright. We'll be bright, and we're, we're going to read that. We said the ancients of days had wool. Well, here, well, here, that's the father, that's exactly. The father would have wool here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we, yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're going to, um, yeah. Psalms eight. We're going to be one through six. Psalms 8, one. matter of fact, Psalms 8, we're going to read, we'll read 1 through, just read 1 through 9, that's cool, it's only 3 more verses. All right, go ahead. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest seal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Mm -hmm. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Mm -hmm. Thou hast thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. You see that how verse number six is talking about man? Remember, the angels were looking and saying, What is man? Thou art mindful of him. The son of man, thou visited him. 
For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and thou crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion. Remember we kept reading? To have dominion over the fowl and the fish of the sea and, and things of the air and every creeping thing. Over the works of thy hand, thou puttest all things under his feet. Go ahead. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field. All right, we have dominion over all those things. Go ahead. The fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. Mm -hmm. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen, amen. So now we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 2. And see when the writer of Hebrews. Psalms 82. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, Psalms 82. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate that. Psalms 82. As a matter of fact, after Psalms 82, we're going to go to John 10. And then we're going to go there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. This is, I, I just, I just want to tell you, we'll just turn there. Psalms 82. Psalms 82. You get there? Go ahead. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Mm -hmm. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? It's the law. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on the darkness. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Mm -hmm. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth. For thou shalt inherit all nations. Right. Because remember, if you're a child or something, cause remember, remember when God created everything out of his image and out of their likeness, you know, that's why I say you got canines, they're all, different, they're all part of the canine family, or, you know, feline, they're all part of the feline family. Like, all these different things are part of the family, so therefore, if we're the sons of God, then who are we like then? God. Exactly. Exactly. Let's go to John 10 real quick. Let's go to John 10. We're going to start at, um, start at verse 27. Go ahead. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Where you at? John 10. And you saw that what verse? 27? Oh. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mm -hmm. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And let's see, I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, It is not written, is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say That's ye, it, that's it. But yeah, but you see that though he says in verse thirty four? It is not written in your law. I say, you're gods, and if you call them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, that's what he said, that's what he meant. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he's telling you, exactly. Like I said, we will, like I said, you know, when we endure to the end and get into the kingdom, we will be like God. But whatever you are going to be in that lake of fire, you're going to be living forever too. But you ain't going to be, I don't know what you're going to be in that lake of fire burning, though, but you ain't going to be like God, though, burning that fire. Now it's going to go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2, 5 through 15. Hebrews chapter 2, 
We're going to read 5 through 15. Hebrews chapter 2, 5 through 15. When we get there, go ahead. For unto the angels have he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in certain, one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did it set him over the works of thy hand? Yeah, we just read that, right? Mm -hmm. In our Psalms, so, mm -hmm. go ahead. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that it not that is not put under him. Mm -hmm. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crown with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should take death for every man. Why do you have to do it? Because remember, spirit beings can't die. So he had to be made a little lower, lower than the angels because, you know, because now you see that we're dying right now because of sin in the world. So he had to put on a human body so that he could die. Because remember, he's eternal. So he, he couldn't have died. That's what Christ humbled himself. There you did. go. Yeah, Amen. Did. And did. we're going to read that. Yeah. yeah, that's next. Exactly, that's next. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. For it became... Him for whom all things, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons in, unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. You said, but to bring many sons unto glory. We're all going to be the sons of God, too. Just like how Christ is the Son of God, we'll be just like Him as well. Many sons unto glory. He's the first Amen. He's the firstborn, first bread, firstborn among all the, the first among. First brethren among the dead to live, to die, and to live again forever. Because remember, there's people that died. Like Lazarus died and came back to life. But then he died again. Christ, after he died, he, he chose, he, he, uh, he, he lives forever now after he died. Exactly. And that's, what we're, and that's what we're striving to do as well. But go ahead. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are, sancti who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them. Brother. That's, that's why he calls us his brother. Go ahead. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Right. And like I said, what was that bondage of the fear of death we were all subject unto? The lake of, lake of fire. Amen. Exactly. Right. Amen. Exactly. Now it's going to go to Philippians 2. But he freed us from that by dying. Praise God. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, we're going to read 5 through 11. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. When we get there, go ahead. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant mm -hmm. and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And what was that name that he gave him that was above every name? Jesus. Jesus. And why, was, and why is that name above every name? Jesus. Because that's the name of the Father. Amen. That's Praise the name of the Father. Exactly. Remember, Jesus' name was Jehovah. In the Old Testament, that was his name, Jehovah. But when he came in, he tells us in John 5:43. I come in my father's name. So when he came in his father's name, he, he not only came in his name, he came in his authority and in his name. So, But that was his name that he gave him. Because remember at birth, the angel told him what you should name his child. It should be called Jesus, yeah. the son of the highest. And that's why God the Father gave him that name because he gave him his name. You know, he's not going by the name of Jehovah as the name he went by in the Old Testament. He's going by the name of Jesus, the name that the, the Father gave him. And that's why people didn't really understand that because you come in his name... 
they knew the name of Jehovah or Yahweh, yeah. but they didn't understand the name of Jesus or Yeshua. They didn't understand that name. And they didn't realize and stuff that that in the Old Testament he was in his uh, in his there name you go. represented that's, his name. That's why John that seven. Fine. That's why John yeah. seventeen and six, when he says um, John seventeen and six, he says, "I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world, dying that they were and thou givest me them, and that they have kept thy word." So he manifested. He made know the name of his father to the men he gave him. That was Jesus, because everyone knew the name of Yash uh, Jesus. I mean, not Jesus, but Jehovah. Mm -hmm. They knew that name. They that's knew. why Jesus kept saying, he said, I don't come in my name. There you go. He's coming. I came in the name right. of Right. That's why when he says in John 5. That is powerful. That's, that was a revelation. That's just, yeah. John 5, 36 and 37 says, but I have greater witness than that of John for the works of the Father which have given me to finish. The same work that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself which has sent me have borne witness of me. He have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And then we go down to verse 43. He says, I come in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him will you receive. So he didn't come in his own name, Jehovah. He came in the name of the father. And But see, they were rejecting that name. They were rejecting so him. Name is Jesus? The father's name is Jesus, yes. So, but well, what is God? That's go ahead. Say it again now. Okay. The so father's, father's name is Jesus. And Jesus' so name. No, God's is a title. We're going by the name. Oh, remember, if you remember, title. yeah. Look at this. Go to go to go to uh, Exodus six. God is just a title, and remember, and um, He was known. That's why there's many other. God is the name of many other. There God's you go. God's As there are many other gods, He said, but there's only one God. Look what He says in uh, when you get to Exodus six. Exodus six. I'm gonna start at verse two. It says, And God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by name Jehovah was I not known to them. See, he didn't make his name known unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They didn't know. All they knew was what? God Almighty. How do we know that? Because when you go to Genesis 17, remember when you approach uh, Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abraham was 99 and 9 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So he's telling them, I am the almighty God. Remember he says, that's why he said it right here. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, by the name of God almighty, but by name Jehovah was not, not known to them. And then, last one, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Revelation 1, verse 8, we're going to see who almighty was. Revelation 1, verse 8. It says this. Huh? The angel of days. Right, no, no. It says this. No, Revelation 1, 8. It says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was to come, the Almighty. See? He's the Almighty. That's, this is Jesus saying this, though. Jesus is letting you know, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So he was referred to as what? God Almighty. He didn't make his name known until he came unto who? Moses, by the name of Jehovah. You're not understanding that? You're not understanding how his name was Jehovah? Jesus' name is Jehovah. But we're calling him Jesus because he has the name of the Father. But his name is Jehovah. He just came in his Father's name. Jesus. And that's the Father's name. That's why he was telling the people, say, I come not in my name. Yes, he's he coming. Saying, because if he was saying that he would come in his name, he would have been saying, I was coming in the name of Jehovah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That Right. That's, remember, look, Isaiah 12, Isaiah 12, one, look what he says in Isaiah 12. Like, so we're, we're going to get back to the lesson. Isaiah 12, verse 2. He says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son, and he has also become my salvation. Who was the one that died for us? Jesus. There you go. Isaiah 43 and 11. Isaiah 43 and 11 says this. He says, I, even I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. He is the one that died for us, not the Father. So he was our Savior. He's the one that became our salvation, which was known as, name was what? Jehovah. He's the one that died for us. That's why he's our savior. The father didn't do it. He sent his son to do it. Can I just bring up something else? Go ahead. 
when, when Christ was appearing before old men and stuff in the Old Testament and stuff, he was appearing as Jehovah in yes. his name and stuff. But the thing about it, remember, it also says that the Father, no flesh can 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 stand in 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 in, in, in his presence. Look at John one eighteen. John one eighteen says because we're consumed in the in the face of the Father. John one eighteen says this: No man has seen God at any time. Right. The only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, He had declared Him. So no one has seen the Father at any time. But it says, but it says, but no man has seen God at any time. Well, if no man has seen God at any time, then who did these seventy four people see in Exodus um, in Exodus twenty four? In Exodus twenty four nine through eleven. Exodus twenty four nine through eleven says this. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Bayou, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet as who were paid works of a sapphire stone, and there were a body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. And look, also they saw God and did eat and drink. But it says no man has seen God at any time. So who did they see? So right, because Colossians 1 tells you that Jesus is the image of the visible, of the visible God. He's, that, that's the image that we've seen him, no one has seen the Father. We won't see the Father until the eighth day. And that's the new beginning. That's when we will all see the Father. But until then, we've only dealt with Jesus from Old to New Testament. The Old Testament, his name was Jehovah. When he came in the New Testament, he came in his Father's name as Jesus. But we only dealt with him from Genesis to Revelation, not the Father. And then we won't deal with the Father until the eighth day. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, when, when, when he comes down, uh, Jesus won't have that name anymore. Look at this real quick. Go to um, Revelations 2. Yeah, see, he's a... No, 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 it's cool. Revelation 2. Because he was burning it down to me a while back, and it makes the name of the and Jesus was always telling people, I, go, I didn't come. You said, you never yeah. heard me boast about me coming in my name, right. not one time. Not one I, time. Never came in the, I came in the name of my father. Right. And he said, if you've seen the father, you've you seen, seen me. Right. You said Revelations 2, Pastor? Yeah. Let me see. Two and what? Let me see. It's um Let me see. I'm trying to because uh it shows where um I don't think it's a three. I believe it was Revelation. Okay, Revelation three. Revelation three. Okay. Let me know when you get there. Mm -hmm. I'm starting eleven and thirteen. Well, eleven to twelve. He says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. Who is that? That's the Father's name. He's going to write upon his name, the name of my God. Who is his God? Jesus. The Father. It's his, Father. It's his God. Look at this. It says, look, in the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which coming down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him. What? My new name. name. Exactly. So Christ has said he's going to have a new. Jesus said he's going to have a new. He's going to have. Yeah, look at this. Revelation 19 real quick. He's coming with a new name. Like I said, so he's not coming with that name when he comes back. Revelation 19 and 12. It says, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written. That no man knew but he himself. So we know who this is talking. This is Christ. But he's remember, he's coming back. He came to magnify the name of the Father. That's the name he came he's to glorify magnify. Glorify. But then when the he comes back, he's coming back with a new name. And the Father, they're gonna have new names. Exactly. That's why I be so, I'm trying to tell us people, why are y'all so caught up in the name of well, don't call, all these different names? Well, he's gonna come back with a new name anyway. But the name that we read and we see, he understands that. But you so caught up, brother, if you don't say this name, he ain't going to understand you. I'm like, what you mean he ain't going to understand you? 
Yes, he will. John, uh, uh, Revelation, um, Psalms 19 and 3 said that, um, was it, uh, uh, Psalms 19 and 3, when someone tried to say, brother, he don't understand that with that name, Jesus, because you know, that's English. John said, look, Psalms 19 and 3, there is no speech nor language mm -hmm. where their voice is not heard. Come on. So uh, now, okay. so hey, now. God know who's calling on you. Right. Thank you. Like, he won't know. Say, like, this sheep here is. I don't hear you because you ain't calling me by the right man, name. Yeah, you thank you. You call me by the wrong name. I don't <laughs> hear you. Yeah, you, you following everything in this scripture. And the name that we see is what we call. Like, we right. see the name Jesus. We call it. We see the name Jehovah. We, 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 we see right. that. You're telling me to call upon a name we can't even see. But that's supposed to be his true Hebrew name. Like, look, bro, that's why I, said, I don't argue with fools like that. Oh, but we know, right, but we understand. Isn't there a scripture talking about don't get into vain disputations or something like that? Uh, argue with vain deceits? Yeah, well, well, yeah, it, well, with vain, I mean, with, with, with vain disputations, with uh, disputing over, over a pet, I mean, over... Over like things that. like yeah. that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we shouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Because that's something like there is, is so minor to, um, what is it at? Yeah, like I said, yeah, that right there is so minor to where... Where is it at? Um, uh, Titus three, Titus three and nine. But avoid foolish questions, genealogies, genealogy and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are all unprofitable and vain. Exactly, they're all unprofitable and vain when you're arguing over stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's all. That's all. Like I said, it's all unprofitable. It's for nothing. Because when you start arguing over stuff like that, you're getting off the, the main there you things go. Of, of the world yeah. and stuff, and that and that's where the enemy comes in and stuff. And have people arguing over little trivial stuff like yeah. that and stuff, you know. Very trivial, exactly. Over because what, what now that you done found out you were Israelite, now you name. you a super Hebrew now. Now all of a sudden you just yeah, now you everything is Hebrew now. Man, get out of here, man. Ain't a lot of times and stuff when you're in distress, I might just say, Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. I know that the Father that the Lord knows who I'm calling mm -hmm. on. Amen. I don't, exactly. I don't have no doubt that he's oh, hey brother, you call him by the wrong name. Thank you. You call it on Zeus when you say Jesus, brother. Let me get that out of Like that, 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 that stuff makes me hot when I hear stuff like that. But yeah, so, so we see that Jesus came in his father's name. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's and that's the name of Jesus. That's why he gave him a name above every name, because that name was above every name, because that's the father's name. So that's real important to understand that. Right. So now let's go ahead and go to uh because remember when he quoted, let's, let's go back to Philippians too, because we didn't finish Philippians. Philippians 2. We, we, we left off at uh we left off at verse 8. Philippians 2. Verse 8. Y'all there? I'm gonna start reading. It says, And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Even the death of the cross, wherefore God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now you understand that you see right here in verse in verse ten that the name of Jesus Christ every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven and things on earth and everything under earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You know that that was found written somewhere else. Isaiah, God, yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah forty-five twenty-three, forty-five twenty-three. Sorry, sorry, no, sorry. Isaiah forty-five twenty-three. Scared or something. Yeah. Right, you see that? Isaiah 45 and 23. It says, I have sworn by myself, the word has not gone out of my mouth is righteous and shall not return. And thou, he says, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall what? Swear. The same thing we just read in what? In, in Philippians 2. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The ice is Ice is cold. Now it's going to go to uh, Acts 13. Yeah, Acts, Acts is cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, 
He did that last night about something would walk past him like a deer or something and start walk barking and stuff like that. Okay, Acts 13. 27 through 33. Y'all there? All right, go ahead. For they that dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of, and he was seen many days of them, which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses and the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And is and as concerning that he raised, yeah that was it though but yeah we see that song because he read he quoted Psalms two and six thou art my son because he wrote you know, he had a raised from the dead and he fulfilled what was written like I said what he told uh, he told our fathers now let's go ahead and go to Romans one Romans one Romans one we're gonna read one through four. Romans 1, 1 through 4. When you get there, go ahead. Romans 1, 1 through 4. Paul, a servant, <coughs> servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets, in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. See, by the resurrection of the dead. That's important. So now it's going to go to Acts 2. Acts 2, 36-38. Thirty-six to thirty-eight. When you get there, go ahead. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. You see that though? It says, "Therefore, let all the house of Israel know that God, who is this God, the Father, the Father. hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ." So he's still Lord. He's still Master Adonai. So. He's also God, and, and Christ, which means the anointed one. But the Father did that. But go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 37. Mm -hmm. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the same, I'm sorry, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now let's go ahead and go to uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans 6, we're going to read 1 through 14. Make it 15. Okay. Romans 6, 1 through 15. Romans chapter 6, 1 through 15. When you get there, go ahead. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we 
that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Mm -hmm. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, mm -hmm. that henceforth we should not serve sin. Mm -hmm. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Mm -hmm. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Right. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Let not sin therefore raise, I'm sorry, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, mm. but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not the law. You are not, not under the mm -hmm. law, but under grace. Read your 15. 15. Okay. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Amen. God forbid. Because we understand that sin is the transgression of the law. So when people always want to tell you we're not under the law, we're under grace, does that, that don't mean that you can still sin. You know what I'm saying? That just means that you, you want to be up under his blood. That's what you want to be because this whole entire world has transgressed his law. So we all have to come up under his blood in order to receive salvation. Now let's go ahead and go to Romans 12. Maybe verse 1 and 2. Romans 12. One and two. When you get there, go ahead. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And remember, when you're, when you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, remember what Paul said in Philippians 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So when you have that word of God embedded in you, that's what you want. That's how our mind gets renewed when we have the word of God, because when you're filled with the word of God, you're no longer thinking the things of this world. Now you're thinking it's you're striving to be like Christ instead of the things of this world. So now it's going to go to Luke 6. Luke 6. 27 to 38. Luke 6, <coughs> 27 to 38. Luke 6, 27 to 38. Go ahead. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto them that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have, what thank have ye? 
for sinners also love those that love them. Verse 34, go ahead. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners and receive as much again. Mm -hmm. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. The children of the highest. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Mm. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Mm -hmm. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Amen. So you see Amen. how God, like I said, like I said, that's why it says we have to be uh, renewed by the trans, trans by the renewing, uh, transformed by the renewing of our mind, and having this mind of Christ in it. So we see how Christ lives. So. That's what we have to do in order to get to that kingdom to be a child. That's why it says right here in verse uh, 35. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. He says that your reward shall be great and ye shall be what? The children of the highest. Just like how Christ was. The only begotten of the son. He, what he, but he knew because the father did that. So we got to do the same exact thing. Love your enemies and all that. It's hard. But those are the things that we have to do in order to get into the kingdom. Like it says, so yeah, so we have to try to be Christ-like. This is powerful in verse 35, which is, but love you your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again. Mm -hmm. And your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest. Mm -hmm. For he is kind Amen. unto the unthankful Woo, and, to, and to the evil. He, he, the rain so shines So therefore on. that when you do something for people and stuff, it's not good for you to be sitting back there, man, I'm mad. I want that joke of $300, man. That joke of man. He didn't even say he thank didn't you. He said thank you. <laughs> and stuff like that. No. And then, you know, but you know, and, and, and really, and we, you know, we, we can go through that and stuff. That's why... Sometimes stuff when you that's why sometimes if you loan money or something like that, you know, to somebody and stuff and if you don't get it back, right. I I've learned the stuff that not, you know, to be, you know, yeah. to hold on to that. Man, that joke was walking around there, he right. he me a hundred dollars, ain't said nothing to me about it. So mm -hmm. if it ain't hurting me and stuff, yeah, you know, exactly. I ain't gonna worry but you know, about. hey, they can't come back to you again though. Yeah, you, know, you gotta be you wise now. Yeah, yeah, Use that wisdom. Yeah, don't be a the, There you go. Yeah, there you use go. That because if they, if you like, say your friends says they owe you three hundred dollars and then you send them, they're coming back and ask you for another hundred, bro. You ain't even paid that three hundred. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. You know, right. you acting like you're doing it over there. There you go. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like man, you got a natural bone food. <laughs> right. <laughs> now let's go to Matthew five. Matthew five, forty-three to forty-eight. Matthew 5, 43 through 48. When you get there, go ahead. Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy enemy, and you, you shall, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that dis, which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Mm. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Mm -hmm. Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Amen. 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 Now I was going to go to uh, 1 John 3. 1 John 3, 1 through 10. Because this is when uh, we're going to read this, when he's actually, as far as us coming into our spiritual bodies at this time. We're back to Colossians. No, that's. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, I'm sorry. Colossians 3, 1 through 10. Thanks. Yeah. And then 1 John 3. Colossians 3, 1 through 10. Colossians 
Colossians 3, 1 through 10. When you get there, go ahead. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. See? For ye are, he says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Why? Because like, remember, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then the ones who are remaining should be caught up with him. So like I said, so that's when, and at that time, we're going to do what? Put on our spiritual bodies. But go ahead. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, and the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. Right, he says, so see, we also did those things before we was in Christ, but now go ahead. But now also put off all these these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off all the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. With, okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now let's go ahead and go to uh first John three. <coughs> First John three, one through ten. First John three, one through ten. First John three, one through ten. You get there? Go ahead. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You see that? See how he says? Beloved, verse 2, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but... We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So remember, we're going to be just like Christ when he appears. But go ahead. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Mm -hmm. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Mm -hmm. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you that he doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the be for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For this seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. You get that? Do you, do you understand that? It says, whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. For his seed shall remain in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. This is when, remember when... um. In John 3, 3, uh, when Nicodemus came to uh, to, uh, to Jesus right here, and he asked him, John 3, 3, Jesus asked his head, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he's showing you right now when you're being born again. He says, so when you're born again, he says, so, if, so 1 John 3, 9, whosoever is born of God, do it not commit sin. For a seed shall remain in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. At this time, when we're born again, now that means that we put on our spiritual body. That's when we're actually born again. We're not born again 
believing in Christ. But you're going through the, it's a process because in order for you to get that spiritual body when you're born again, it needs to start with your mind first. So your mind needs to, that has to be renewed as far as believing and trust on him and have a renewing of your mind before you can even get your spiritual body, before you can even be born again. So when you're born again, you're not sinning. Why, why aren't you sinning anymore? Because now you're just like him now. You're just like Christ. You're born again, having all your um your spiritual body. When you were reading stuff, what, when, what we're going through right now, said we do not know what we will appear to be. Mm -hmm. So, but 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 we have that hope that when he that when, when 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 he does appear, we will be just like him, just like just him. like him, mm -hmm. the same way how he was when he appeared. You know, in that house when um when Dalton Thomas and all of them, that's how we're gonna look. Just, we're gonna be just like that. Well, you're in the room, you're in the room, but yeah, but we're gonna be just like him. Just like him. And how he is, that's how we're going to be. Exactly like that. Verse 10. And, then, and this, these are the children of the devil. In this the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Amen. Exactly. So remember, so when we're born, when we're born again, that's when we put on our spiritual bodies. But it's a process before we can be born again. We have to at least start by the renewing of our mind and put this word in us so that we can live a righteous life so that, therefore, when we die or whatever like that, we can put on our spiritual bodies. Exactly. Now, let's go ahead and go to, okay, Philippians 3. So, to an extent, the stuff, what we're going through right now, it's like we're in the womb right now. Exactly, right, cause, <laughs> right because, you know, in, um, he says flesh and blood, uh, what is it at, 1 um, Corinthians, uh, Corinthians 15, First Corinthians 15 and 50. Now say I this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. See, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to be, what, born again so that we can inherit the kingdom of God because we'll be spiritual beings at the time, mm -hmm. not flesh and blood. So that's how we know we're not born again now because why? We're still in flesh and blood. That's right. So we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Because carnal, carnal. Carnal, there you go. Amen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now it's going, okay, Philippians 3. 20 and 21. When you get there, go ahead. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for our, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things. Unto himself. He says, he's who who shall change our what? Vile body. Oh, wow. That's like our lowly body, mm -hmm. right? And that it may be fashioned like unto what? His glorious body. Because mm -hmm. we're going to be like that, so we're going to change his body. And we'll be just like him when he comes. Exactly. So we, we want to go ahead. See, that's when people be, you know, that's why I've always looked at the stuff when people always were saying, like, you know, child, when I'm, I'm saved, sanctified, and full mm -hmm. of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. No, we're not. We're no, not right. at that glorious there body yet now. At and all. That, that's, and then, you know, and I always, I'd hear people say that, and, and and I'd be like, well, they got something I don't have. Because I, I, I'm like Paul, he said, I recognize within my flesh dwelleth no, no good rich. thing. Amen. <laughs> and that's a fact. Wait, no, seriously. Yeah, and I'm like, I, yeah. You know, you, you see Nothing good. That, there you go. Until, the flesh is empty against God. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Until... We put on our spiritual Amen. body, that's when we'll be right. But until then, it's constantly, it's, that's why I said the spirit Amen. is willing, but, but the, the flesh, flesh is weak. weak. Exactly. Praise God. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. We're going to read... Uh, Read 22 and 23. Is that 21 and 23? No, I said 22. 22 and oh. 23. Okay. It's, it's on there. I thought it was 21. I thought it was 21. No, the, the two got a little faded. Yeah, it's a two, and then it's a thing, and then it's 23. It's just a, a three here. Go ahead. Two and 23. For as, Adam, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Mm hmm. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Exactly. Now read verse 35. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Now read uh, 42 to 44. So also 
is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Mm -hmm. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in a, it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. 47. The first man of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Mm -hmm. And as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the Im image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Amen. Amen. So now it's going to go to Exodus 34. Exodus 34. It's going to be 28 through 35. Amen, exactly. Amen. Amen. Exodus 34, 28 through 35. When you get there, go ahead. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai, with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down let's see, from the Mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron... And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. And when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that he was com uh, that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. Mm -hmm. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went. And to speak with him. So you see that? So Moses had to have the veil ever since he went from that situation. Now Moses has to wear a veil among the children of Israel because he was so bright because of him being in the, in the presence of his Shekinah glory. But when he went back to God, he would took the veil off because, you know, God's used to that light. You know what I'm saying? But when he came, he had to put it right back down so because his face was so bright. Exactly. And watch, we're, we're going to read some more about, about so, you know, bright content. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Let's go to Matthew 16. We're going to be just I, like I, that. I, I would think I would be so bold with stuff to dispute against Moses. <laughs> you, yeah, know, you know he done spent time with God and stuff like that. And, and you see in the stuff that there's been a physical change. And there's a lot. That Shekinah glory. Of Thank you. Man, you will. That thing was because they, they, they said they, they told him to put that veil on. It was bright. So uh, he had to keep that on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matthew 16, 27 and 28. Go ahead. Matthew 16, 27 and 28. For the, man, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. 
Verily I say unto you, there shall, uh, verily I say unto you, there be some standing here who shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Do you understand that? He said, Verily I say unto you, there shall some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. So he it's still alive while he was here. Right. But see, and now we're gonna see because we know he didn't come back down into his kingdom because he's right now sitting in the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. So we got to get some understanding of what he was talking about. Now let's go and read verse 17. Because a lot of people get thrown off on this. This is where uh, preterists come in. And that's why they think that all that was fulfilled around 70 AD. Because that was the, uh, th those were the people in that generation. Is that No, no. You're going to read it right here. It's John, this is the very next chapter. Let's go ahead and read uh, Matthew 17. Matthew 17. And then we're going to read 1 through 9. Go ahead. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, mm -hmm. and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Oh, that Elias is Elijah, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. While he had spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus said, and Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. See, so those were the ones that were standing there that saw him come into his kingdom. They allowed, God allowed, it was a vision now. Remember, this is, this, that was key. Tell the vision to no man. So he saw, he ended up seeing who? Moses, Elijah, and Christ in their glorified body, in their form. That's what he's talking about. That's why he says, uh, verse 2, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his ring was white as light. And then he, all, he then ended up seeing Moses and Elijah the same exact way. Because I know, because, you know, that's why they wanted to make a tabernacle, you know what I'm saying, for them, for one for Christ, one for Moses, one for uh, Elijah. But he was like, no, but he allowed them to see him. As he is when he, when he comes into his kingdom. Oh, that's powerful. I, I put that together. Now, verse 28 in the prior chapter said, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Peter, James, and John. And John. There, there you go. Those saw. were the three. I saw it. Wow. Not the other ones, exactly. And then he wow. said, Tell no one, tell, tell the a vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. So that was a vision that he saw, but he allowed them to see him as he comes when he's going to come into his. Because that's why we're asking, was it a prophecy? Uh, that's why, that's why I said prophecy. But, but that, those he said, because when he said, there are some that stand in here. There you go. In that present moment. Yes, exactly. Because remember, verse 24, Jesus was talking to his disciples. Then Jesus said unto his disciples in verse 16, he's talking to the disciples, but he just, he just allowed Peter, James, and John to see that. Not the other uh, nine. And he was uh, all that standing. He that's just some that There you go. Here, Praise right? God. Praise that's God. it. Those three. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. There you go. Exactly. So he allowed them to see that. So now let's go ahead and go to Daniel 12. People don't really understand the part of the vision part where it says this was the vision. Mm -hmm. So like that, that throws people off and they think that's why the predators think everything into that 70 AD when he came into his kingdom. Like, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not what that was telling you. But yeah, let's go to Daniel 12. And we're going to read 1 through 3. Daniel 12, 1 through 3. When you get there, go ahead. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered 
everyone that shall be found written in the book, mm -hmm. and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Mm -hmm. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, the firmament. and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You see that? See? So look, so he says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many uh, to righteousness and stars forever and ever. Remember, like I said, this, so when 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 we like I said, so when we come into that first resurrection, and we put on our spiritual body, we're going to be bright. Like I said, like just like how we, we we saw Christ when they saw Christ and Moses and life, we're going to be the same exact way. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to be. That's how you going to know when you want to earth definitely for that first resurrection. You going to notice some spirit beings because they're going to be bright like the light, and then you'll see the. The regular humans here, but then when the Father comes, everybody that's going to be in the kingdom is going to be in their glorified body at that time. There ain't going to be no spiritual, be uh, earthly beings at that time. Go ahead. Verse 2 to me and stuff is speaking of the great white throne. Yes, yeah, it, it is. That's what it I is. said because it, because it said those that are sleeping. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Verse 2. that sleep in the dust of the earth shall await some to everlasting life yeah, and huh? then some to everlasting the like a fire. Right, yeah. He went all the way down to the great white throne judgment. Yeah. And then he went down to let you know in verse 3 how they're going to be. They're going to shine as, as bright as the firmament. But just letting you know that even in the first resurrection, there's still going to be some that's going to um, that's gonna have on the spiritual body at that time as well. Mm -hmm. But he did bring it all the way down to verse 2 to the great right throne judgment. Like, you know, some are going to be in the kingdom, some are going to be in the lake of fire. But they're both going to be living forever, though. Everlasting, what is it, everlasting life, and some to everlasting content. And, and, and right. so that's what, what Scripture was talking about when Jesus said, enter into my rest. That's those ones that are blessed and there that, that are able and stuff. Yes, to that thousand there you go. And, and everyone ain't going to let you do that, though. Yeah, that's few. Exactly, well, exactly. Well, that's where I want to be. Well, you don't say this, your spirit lives forever, but you don't know if it's going to be in heaven or There you go. Everyone's going to live forever. Still, even though Everyone's going to live here, our spirit's going to live forever. And you get some people who feel yeah, like God, they say just like Sodom and Gomorrah, so they feel so that God's just going to let you burn for a while and then, then it's going to be over with. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy because when, 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 when they read that thing in Sodom and Gomorrah, it tells you, verse 7, Jude 1, 7, even as Solomon and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going into strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That was just an example of you just to see when he put the fire and brimstone on, on Solomon and Gomorrah. That's going to be an example of the lake of fire where it can be constantly fire and brimstone being thrown there day and night, being tormented forever. Mm -hmm. That was just an example. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. People forget that example part, and they think, see, it's not, see, uh, it, it, it's not eternal fire right now going on in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. I know that was just an example of what's going to what's going to come. See, they, they forget that That's part. the same way about God sending the flood. They, there you go. Uh -huh. he but, said to, uh -huh, but, but he, but he, uh, he said, but he, he stated, he said, but never again would he That's why he does a rainbow. Right. Uh -huh. Amen, exactly. that's he going to do with fire but, but wasn't everybody killed except for Noah yeah. and a few and that, eight, that was His eight souls, he exactly. He did what he yeah. said he was going to do. There he wiped out the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Wiped it out. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, read verse 9, then 26, and then 29. No, Romans 8, read 9 through 26. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye, all, ye shall die. Mm -hmm. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. See, we're we the sons of God, just like, just like how Christ was. Like it says, we'll be just like that. We're we the sons of God. We're led by the Spirit of God, which is His Word. Go ahead. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, 
Abba Father. You see, the spirit of what? Adoption. And why is it the spirit of adoption? Because we, uh, someone's grafting in. Go ahead. The reason why, because remember, spirit beings can't procreate. So, so, so we can't good. procreate. We need to be what? Adopted, Adopted into the God family. Oh, okay. That's how. Spirit of adoption, because we got to be adopted to the God family when we die and raise again and become to the family of God. Because spirit beings can't procreate and create other ones. Can't do that. So that's why he clearly says right here. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Wherefore we cry, Abba, Father. Why? Because he's our, Abba, he's our Father, because we will be what? The sons of God at that time. But go ahead. And if children, being heirs, being heirs, heirs of God, the and, Father, mm -hmm. and joint heirs with Christ, right? If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also, we may be also glorified together. Mm -hmm. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, mm -hmm. not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Mm -hmm. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. See, he's talking about the, see, the waiting for the adoption to wit, for the, for the redemption, so we can be redeemed in our what? New bodies. Watch this. Keep reading. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. See, but but hope that is seen is not hope. Mm -hmm. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Go ahead. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Mm. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestined he, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. See, amongst many yeah. brethren, exactly. Uh huh. Isn't that beautiful that, that times and stuff, because I've been there when you you don't know what to pray for, but it's mm -hmm. in the but the Lord he intercedes Amen. for us I and love prays it. for I love that. Amen. Man. Ephesians 1, amen. Ooh, Ephesians 1, 3 through 7. You get, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Get that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. It's the adoption again. Go ahead. By Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us a accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace amen now let's go ahead and go to uh, galatians 4. verse 4 he says again where he has chosen us yeah exactly and then also he said we're also it's predestined too though mm -hmm. we were he already knows who's going to be in the kingdom of already exactly mm -hmm. he already knows
Galatians 4, 4 through 7. Galatians 4, 4 through 7. Can you get there? Go ahead. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son unto, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Right. So you see, now he sees us no more as what? Servant. Now he calls us what? We're sons, sons. now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Last one. Revelation 21. One through seven. Revelation 21, one through seven. Can you get there? Go ahead. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Mm -hmm. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the foundation of the water of life freely. And what is that water of life that freely? The word, word of God. God. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Amen. He that overcometh shall inherit all, all things, things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So I hope you got some understanding. Praise Praise God. God.